Hello and welcome to the lecture on computer graphics. Today we are going to learn about uh, algorithms by which lines, circles and ellipses are drawn in computer graphics. So, the title of the lecture is scan converting lines, circles and ellipses and uh, the word scan converting itself gives you a meaning as to uh, that you have to basically scan and convert the lines from the frame buffer onto the screen. Okay. So, basically you have to fill up the pixels in the frame buffer and automatically the uh, lines or the curves will be drawn on the screen. Now, if you remember the uh, there are basically almost four, uh, uh, four different attributes of drawing in computer graphics. One are lines, second are arcs, curves and ellipses they fall under one category. In fact, circle is a special type of an ellipse and arc is also a uh, special type, it is a part of a circle and ellipse. So, arc circles and ellipse fall under one category, straight lines fall under one category and then polygon drawing and uh, its filling uh, is the third type which uh, we will see later on in due course of time. And uh, of course, uh, those uh, form a combination of line drawings. So, using line drawings we basically draw polygons on the screen and also uh, fill them with different types of uh, patterns. So, that is the third category and of course, the fourth category is the drawing text on the screen. So, out of these four different attributes of uh, drawing lines, uh, arcs, circles, ellipses or polygons uh, filled or um, empty on text, we are going to study the first one first, the uh, method of drawing a straight line on the screen. Okay. And uh, of course, that seems to be the most easiest one. Uh, out of these four different attributes, basic minimal attributes necessary for any graphics drawing package software or standard which you whatever you mean. And we will see why drawing lines uh, are for, for, for drawing lines you need an algorithm to draw a line, because the straight line is probably the easiest thing which a baby even can draw in a school uh, in the primary section. You give him a, a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen and give him a scale and he just draws a line, puts the a, a scale and draws a line. And the equation of line is also very straightforward, the most simplest one. When you read equations and read geometry, the equation of the line comes on first the ex linear expression and uh, there should not be any problem. So, why do we talk of an algorithm for uh, scan converting lines? We will see that. Uh, and uh, before going into it, of course, I will give you a hint why you need an algorithm. Because when we draw a line, when you think of a line in a graph paper or on a plain paper or whatever the case may be, we are probably in fact, why probably drawing a line in an analog environment uh, where all points are defined all for x, y different coordinates, but, but in the case of a computer uh, graphics, in the case of computer graphics, you have a digitized raster environment. So, x, y are defined as integer coordinates and you need to actually find out what are those coordinates which fall on the line. Uh, uh, before you draw it. So, that is the problem in the digitized space. We do not have continuous values of x and y like the analog world and hence why and hence the case we need a method uh, or an algorithm by which you draw a line. Okay. So, what are the uh, main points? Uh, what is basically a line? What are the key issues of drawing a line? Well, uh, the problem now can be posed as that given the specification for a straight line, given the specification for a straight line, find the collection of addressable pixels which most closely approximates this line. 
Now, you can almost start to visualize, if you remember the lectures on display devices, raster and all that, you can visualize yourself the digitized space or the raster space as a matrix or an array of pixels and definitely if you draw an arbitrary line, not all of these square pixel blocks or raster positions will fall in a line. So, we are talking of approximately representing line in that sense, truly of course, in an analog environment. Uh, you can say there are basically almost infinite points which lie on a line, that is not the case. We have a finite set of pixels which fall on a line and you have to find out which are those finite pixels. When you define a line, you can talk think of an equation of a line or the starting point x 1 y 1 and the finishing point x 2 y 2 of a line and you need to, you can simply draw a line by a scale that is fine, but in the case of a graphic screen which you are viewing now in a TV or a CRT monitor, you have to find out what are those pixels starting from x naught, y naught and so on up to an end points x and y naught, x 1, y 1. Okay. So, what are those points or addressable pixels is the term used here in the problem definition which falls in this line. So, that is the problem posed now that I, I read it again given the specification of a straight line either in the form of an equation or the starting point at the end point if that is given to you find the collection of addressable pixels which most closely approximates this line. So, that was the definition which was given and so the goals of the uh, if you look into the next line. The goals of this uh, uh, solve pro solving the problem and of course, I must say here that at a given point of time not all of them may be achievable with the discrete space of a raster device. So, that is the discretization of the raster device is the one which is causing the problem. We will see a lot of examples what is this illustrative examples are there in the next one hour or more where we will see why what is meant by the problem of approximating this line and drawing a line in a discretized space of a raster device. Okay. Let us find out the goals of drawing. Straight line should appear straight. Now, again you have to start thinking in the rasterized scenario or you can wait till I bring up the illustration of drawing a line in a discretized environment because for a straight line is a straight line. Okay. If, you, if you think from a mathematical perspective uh, or, or from a child as you say we give a scale and you can draw a line, a straight line is a straight line. Okay, unless the scale shift or the paper shifts, as long as it is a rigid environment, you draw a line, it always appears straight. So, what is the issue here? And when we talk about straight line should appear straight, yes, this is because the rasterized environment, which you will see that it, it, it makes the line appears not crooked, but something else which you will see. So, our motivation or, or the goal here for the problem is to find out those addressable pixels from the starting point to the ending point in this discrete array of pixels where in such a manner that the straight line should appear as straight as possible, as linear as possible from the starting point to the finishing point. So, that is the first goal a straight line should appear straight and you can hold on till the examples come uh, to find out what this goal basically mean. Uh, we will have a lot of examples today and the second goal as appears on the screen now is that the line should start and end accurately. That is very, very important. Actually, you can start from the uh, a po a point and reach the other point or, or draw the line in the reverse fashion, whatever the case may be you should draw the line accurately and, uh, and should not expect to come up with an algorithm where you start at this uh, at a starting point all right and finish somewhere near or close to the ending point. That will not solve the purpose, that does is not the goal of computer graphics. It should start at the starting point and end at the finishing point, that should be the case and matching end points with connecting lines. Okay. So, that is the case which is very important, two main goals are it should appear straight and it should be accurate. The lines should have constant brightness, that is also the case. And the question comes is when you probably take a pencil and draw the line typically appears constant in a in a paper, but what is the issue here when you talk of a line having constant brightness? Well, we will see that the addressable pixels which you are drawing may not be uniformly spaced along the line in terms of the distance between corresponding or respective I am sorry the corresponding pixels as they come from the starting to the finishing point and if the addressable pixels the distance between them start varying from small to large from the starting point to the finishing point the pixels which are there their gaps are non-uniform what will happen the, the line may appear slightly more darker at certain small small sections and lighter in certain other. So, we will try to uh, also see uh, that how to make a line with a constant brightness and the last and most important point as far as computer science is concerned for any algorithm is it should be as fast as possible. The complexity should be made as minimal, the cost of computation the, the because you have to calculate certain values and uh, it should be done as rapidly as possible such that the line is drawn very fast.
So, what are the problems associated with drawing a line? Okay. The main goal of the algorithm is to basically or the problem is to determine which pixels to eliminate to satisfy the above, above goals you know all the pixels are dark if you want to just draw line one line on the screen you have to eliminate a set of pixels and which are those pixels from the starting to the finishing point are those pixels you have to eliminate up fill up the raster such that the straight line appears straight accurate and uniform whiteness. Now this problem of uh, <coughs> the line appearing uh, not very uniform in terms of brightness and straight does not happen in all cases of the line. Out of all possible lines which you can draw on the screen, the lines which are vertical on the screen exactly vertical, horizontal it means typically we are talking about along the x axis of the screen and y axis of the screen and lines with slope plus and minus 1 that is its substance uh, and that is the angle between the line and the x or y axis is 45 degrees or pi by 4 radians. Those, these are the 3 or 4 special cases where you actually get a straight line and they are <coughs> the easiest to draw. You will see that as well. For all other cases, for all other lines, uh, it creates problems. That means you have what is an effect called as a staircasing effect. It's also called jaggies or uh, also called aliasing. These three terms will be used interchangeably throughout the course, and we will soon see what do I mean by the effect of staircasing of a line in general. Remember the second point which we discussed just before. The effect of staircasing, jaggies, or aliasing do not occur in a line if the line is uh, uh, absolutely vertical, horizontal or at with a slope of plus or minus 1. Okay. So, these lines appear absolutely straight, there is absolutely no problem. In, of course, in these cases also we have to find out using the same, same algorithm what are the points in between the addressable points which must be illuminated all right. But uh, the problem of the staircasing effect or the jaggies or aliasing the other two terms which are used interchangeably we might sometime call it as an aliasing or this is a staircasing effect these problems will not be there for these three or four special cases whereas for every other line you will have this effect within the line and the quality of the line drawn depends on the location of the pixels and their brightness. So, that is also very important that uh, the location of the pixels on the line determine the, the local uh, brightness in the line and that uh, local brightness should be uniformly uh, uniform from the starting to the finishing point. Okay. So, these are the various problems. This is an example of an effect of the staircasing, jaggies or aliasing which we are talking about and the problem comes therefore, because it is uh, difficult to find out which are the addressable pixels which must be eliminated. In this case, I am trying to draw a line from the left hand uh, corner uh, here at the bottom left of the line to the top right. So, the starting and the ending pixels are given and the question comes is which are the pixels in the line you can almost visualize that um, the line does not actually pass to the center of any pixel. So, you have to eliminate a set of pixels to make it appear very straight and uh, you can see here in the middle there are two options for you. You can eliminate the top white portion which is either left or the bottom blue one in both cases it is the same because the line passes through in the center of these two pixels and uh, you can actually have two different lines drawn for the uh, uh, same uh, straight line same specification of the starting point or ending point or slope and intercept of the line. We will see the equations of the line, but in this case you can see the effect of staircasing as you move from left to right, uh, left to bottom to top right it appears as a staircase that is why it is called a staircasing effect or the line appears jaggies as you move um, through the analog line, when analog line means the straight line exactly as you would have drawn in a graph paper uh, the line appears very crooked and jagged from left to right it oscillates and that is the effect uh, which uh, is predominant in almost any lines except special lines and then again uh, it is uh, the uh, and uh, now you can almost visualize you basically need a very fast algorithm to find out which are these lines from the bottom left to the top right of the screen to be drawn here or illuminated such that you have a uniform straight line. So, that is that is the problem with this example which shows of course, we will take numerical examples to find out uh, how do you calculate and get those pixels, but this is an example which, uh, which illustrates two facts. The one fact is uh, that uh, the uh, there is an effect of staircasing or jaggies as you move that the line dances up and then again there are two options in certain cases you have two options of choosing this or that pixel and it is sometimes difficult to find out which pixel you will draw to actually have uniform illumination. 
and uh, that is the main problem. As far as the third and the last uh, goal of the algorithm is concerned is now the question comes is uh, you, uh, how fast can you draw, okay, how fast can you draw because the algorithm must be so fast that uh, you must be able to draw a line instantaneously. If the algorithm is slow, you are eliminating one pixel after another, nobody will purchase your graphic software because the big why because the uh, you are not going to draw only a single line you are going to draw an entire picture which consists of lines arcs text uh, polygons shading textures and all that and if you to draw a line itself could be a very slow process where a user basically sees one line being drawn here then another line and so on to complete one structure itself if you take a second or more uh, and the entire picture uh, um, a few minutes uh, then nobody in fact will draw a line. In fact, you should draw a line as fast as possible so that the user cannot perceive that the line is being drawn. The algorithm must be very fast. So, you need to do some computations very fast and uh, in the integer space, in the discretized raster space such that the algorithm is draw fast. I again repeat that for an analog case as far as mathematics is concerned, given the specification of a line, you can always draw a line in a graph paper. There is absolutely no problem, but that is not a simple transformation from the analog graph paper or, or, or a white paper in fact to the discretized scheme where we have an array of pixels discretized in environment and you have to select certain pixels, certain, certain addressable pixels in the raster map which should be grown. So, these are the two problems which hamper us uh, and uh, of course, there are good algorithms uh, which we will see. We will see a, a slightly more uh, a simple algorithm to start with and then we will come up which may not be that fast and then we will see how a fast algorithm can be designed. Okay. So, let us look at a solution for trying to draw a line. The, the, the way we know we draw a line in a graph paper, we look at the equation of the, uh, of the line in a screen where we say that the direct solution say the simple expression of a line which gives you try to solve the equation uh, or y equal to mx plus b uh, where m is the slope of the line and 0 comma b is the y intercept of the line. We all know this m is the slope, b is the y intercept and uh, you can pick up values of any values of x substitute on the right hand side of the expression m x equal to plus b and compute the value of y which you will get on the left hand side. Okay. So, that is very simple, you can substitute any value of x, but unfortunately x values are discrete set of values, integer discrete set of values and let us say my x naught comma y naught is the starting point and x 1 comma y 1 is the finishing point or end point of the line. So, what you keep, must keep doing is substitute values from x naught, x naught plus 1 and so on up to x 1 and substitute in the equation m x plus b here and get the value of y. If the values of even if x is an integer value, the problem which comes here is the value of m and b. Uh, b could be an integer location, but the value of m is definitely in general a floating point number and m is a floating point number and even in spite of the fact that x and b, I can put a constant that x and b are integer values because I am drawing it on a graph paper with integer coordinates let us say and uh, or a screen with integer coordinates pixel values. So, if x and b could be integers and m is a floating point that is enough to give us a value of y which is a floating point number. So, you have to round off the value of y, y round off you can easily guess, we will see that if you do not round off the value of y or take the next highest or the next lowest the, 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 the line does not appear well. So, you need to round off the value of y from the above equation m x plus b or the value of m x plus b which is a floating point number must be rounded off to get the actual integer value of y. Okay? take an example, we will take an example and compute certain values of integer coordinates. Let us say I take a simple value of b is equal to 1. So, my starting point is 0 comma 1 for the line and the slope is a fractional number say 3 by 5 which could be 0 0.6 which is in fact 0 0.6. I represent it as 3 by 5 or you can write it as 0 0.6 and uh, try to calculate that if I start to uh, obtain the value of uh, uh, successive values starting from the location. 0 comma 1 and next successive 5 values you see here they are given in this uh, uh, in the table in the, on the bottom where if I substitute x equal to 1 in the expression m x equal to b where m is equal to 3 plus 5 and the value of b is equal to 1 you get a y which is round of 3 by 5 plus 1 which is 8 by 5. So, round of 8 by 5 will be equal to 
okay. So, you round it off and get a integer value of 2. You can keep on substituting next take the value of x equal to 2 what you will get is uh, under m x plus b you will get 6 by 5 plus 1 which gives you round of 11 by 5 round of 11 by 5 is 2. For x equal to 3 you get round of 14 by 5 why 3 into 3 by 5 9 by 5 plus 5. So, it gives you 14 by 5 x equal to 4 gives you 12 by 5 plus uh, 1 which is 17 by 5 uh, and x equal to 5 gives 15 by 5 divided uh, plus 1 divided by 5. So, it is 20 by 5. So, round of 20 by 5 is exactly 4. Uh, so, the, 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 uh, the ending point is fine, but if you see the other values round 17 by 5 is will give you 3 round 14 by 5 will give you. So, these are now the integer coordinates obtained by using the calculation m x plus b where b is equal to 1, m is equal to 3 by 5, starting point is 0 comma 1 of the line, finishing point is 5 comma 4 and these are the integer coordinates 1 comma 2, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3 and 4 comma 3. These are the addressable pixels or integer coordinates of the line which we have obtained by this calculation. So, let us look at the result. Actually, if you had given the starting point 0 comma 1 and finishing point 5 comma 4, you can easily calculate yourself the equation of the line and say that my slope is, uh, I am sorry, the intercept b is equal to 1 and the slope is uh, 3 by 5 because it starts at 0 comma 1 and ends at uh, uh, um, uh, uh, 5 comma 4 or it starts at 1 comma 2 and ends at 5 comma 4 and uh, you can draw the line in this form. Okay, so, uh, uh, 0 comma 1 yes, so it is uh, basically uh, 1, 2, 3. So, at 1, 2, 3, so 3 by 5 is the slope of the line because the vertical disparity is exactly 3 and the horizontal disparity is 5. So, the slope of the line um, is basically uh, uh, 3 by 5, 4 minus 1 is the numerator, 5 minus 0, so it is 3 by 5 as you can see. And if you have given a graph paper you know, to a boy in a school, uh, or a child in a school, he would have drawn this line um, from the starting point 0 comma 1 to the finishing point 5 comma 4. So, that I will, so this is an example of not the picture of the raster line drawn on the graphic screen. This is an ideal case of a line drawn on a graph paper. You just, you just have to worry about 0 comma 1 and 5 comma 4 or vice versa. You can start from 5 comma 4 and end at 0 comma 1 also. Nobody, and the starting and ending point could be swapped, but still you get the same line and you draw the line on the graph paper, but this will not suffix in a raster screen. Why? As you can see the integer position, the pixels, the horizontal grids, those intersection points are the points where the pixels lie. Of course, the starting point 0 comma 1 at the bottom left and 5 comma 4 <coughs> on the top right are the starting and finishing points. So, those pixels of course, have to be switched on that is fine, but what about the rest in the middle? As you can see if the intersection intersecting grid lines are the locations of the pixels which includes of course, the starting and the finishing point also, where is the starting point here 0 comma 1, finishing point 5 comma 4, fine. But if you take the other integer uh, coordinates uh, which are the intersection points of the grids, the line does not pass through any of the intersection points it is bound to happen in general for almost all lines except the lines which are vertical, horizontal and of course, bearing a slope of plus and minus 1. Those are special cases otherwise in general a line is almost like it is not guaranteed, but in general what will happen is it will not pass through any intersection point. This is what we see in this example that this line does not pass through an intersection point and now the question comes is which of these intersection points which you see on saw on that screen just now have to be illuminated. They may not exactly lie on the line, but you have to actually find out the closest, closest of those integer pixels or addressable pixels or points on the screen which has to be switched on to give you a feeling that you are basically drawing a line which is almost straight. Now, you will ask a question, when I see a straight line on a screen, I usually see it straight. I do agree with you. I do agree with you. In fact, the screen which you have just seen now, I had drawn a line which is shown on a graphic screen. Why does it appear straight enough? Well, I must admit you that you are seeing a line on a very high resolution graphics monitor and that monitor typically may have 1000 pixels by about a few hundred to almost 1000 by 1000 grain. And we have seen that line, that line will not consist of only 3 or pixels which have been illuminated on the screen. That line the red line which you have just seen now as an example of that continuous line may consist of several hundred pixels and those several hundred addressable points when they are so very close, 
and dense they tend to and lie almost very close to the line you have a feeling that it you are basically drawing a straight line. So, that is the advantage of perception of the eye which you try to bypass or cheat a little bit to give you an impression that all the pixels are not exactly lying on the line it is so dense and so close and if you are drawing a line which is of length several hundred pixels let us say at least 100 or more it will appear to be a straight line. But you can find the effect of staircasing and jaggies by two methods two methods are the following when you are watching through a TV monitor or a computer screen take a lens and try to observe a line very closely a very thin line or even it could be a thick line we will see the problems of thick lines later on in the screen let us worry about a line but the width is just one pixel if you zoom onto that screen either using a lens or or through some um, photoshop or uh, paint brush type of softwares you will find that the pixels start to blow up as square blocks we will see with an example I have got an example where I will show when you zoom close to a line how the pixels start appearing and you will start to see the effect of jaggies from the starting point to the finishing point of the line. So, and when you blow out um, instead of blowing in and the line appears dense and condensed it appears as a straight line. So, please do not uh, have a, a, a feeling in mind that I am just saying that the line which appears straight why do I saying that the line will appear it has to appear the staircasing effect has to appear because you are working in a rasterized digitized environment the pixel addressable, addressable points when they are very close will appear almost a straight line, but still we should try to make an attempt to draw as straight a line as possible by selecting the addressable points which are very close that is the problem which I have just shown now and of course, the second problem is how fast we can draw the line that is the most important part where we need the, uh, the computer scientists and the computer science based students will be very happy to come up with an algorithm where we, we were in need of processing things very fast come up with an optimal algorithm before that to solve that, but we will still in the environment where we substitute the value of m into m x plus b ok m is a floating point number x and b could be integers. So, the resultant value is a floating point number you use around the operation to calculate the y and x comma y integer values you select them ok. So, let us see with this example which you have just solved now this was the example which we just solved now the starting point uh, was obtained uh, as 1 comma 2 the finishing point of the line was 5 comma 4 the rest of the values in between were obtained using round function. So, these are the examples which we just solved uh, about one or two slides back and, inst and why the round function is important I did say that that is probably the closest integer pixel which you get if you do not use round function then what will you use of course, you cannot get a pixel at uh, the fractional numbers which are put on the right hand side that is that 8 by 5, 11 by 5, 14 by 5, 17 by these are all floating point numbers there is no addressable pixels uh, available at any arbitrary floating point numbers. So, you will say instead of rounding I will choose the next highest number or the next lowest number ok. If you choose the next highest number let us see what it happens. If you choose the next highest number with starting from 0 comma 1 and then 1 comma 2 that is the next highest instead of 11 by 5 the next comma uh, next uh, highest number will be 2 comma 3, 3 comma 3 of course is the next highest then you get 4 comma 4 and 5 you can see these are the next highest instead of using the round function what has been done here is you have chosen the next highest integers with respect to the values given on the right hand side next highest of 8 by 5 which is 2. So, you have uh, 1 comma 2 next highest of 11 comma 5 is 3. So, you have 2 comma 3 instead of 2 comma 2 14 by 5 next highest gives you 3 that is fine, but in 17 by 5 the next highest is 4. So, these are the pixels which you will get if you chose the next highest you can visualize yourself that if you choose the next lowest instead you will just almost get the mirror image of what are the pixels which, which we have just seen on the screen and as you can see on the screen the pixels which you have seen they are all on one side of the line and that is not the line we were looking for the line will appear to be little bit shifted away only the starting and the ending point will be the same all the pixels will appear to be on one side. If you use the round function what happens this is now the figure which we see here instead of the next highs if when you use the round functions and we have already used it and obtained the integer coordinates of x and y as 1 comma 2, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 3 and 5 comma 4 and they have been drawn on the screen starting from 0 comma 1 the starting point to 5 comma 4, 1 comma 2 of course is the next addressable point then 2 comma 2 here, 3 comma 3 here, 4 comma 3 here, 5 comma 4 is the last finishing point now you can see there is a lot of balance there are few pixels on the top of the line 
some on and some at the bottom of the line. Okay. So, this is what is going to happen and you will have a uniform split of a few points on both sides of the line and uh, typically you'll, I, this is scenario which you will get in numerical computing exercises of what is called as least square regression of a line where these points are given and you need to find the equation of a line. Uh, but uh, that is a different problem altogether. In this case of computer graphics, you are expected to find out those points which are distributed over the line and the most closest. That is one is most important that you need to find out the points which are most closest and these are the points which are most closest by using the round function. So, what we have done in the calculation so far? We know the starting point and the finishing point of the line from that we compute the slope of the line which is the m get sucks and of course, we know the y intercept b that is fine and we know the starting point. So, from the starting point to the finishing point x coordinates we take keep on taking the next successive integer value that means, keep incrementing by 1. Yeah, and for each such step of after incrementing 1, uh, what you have to do? You have substitute in the equation m x plus b, get a floating point number, round it off, get a y value which is an integer and that is how you compute this. So, this is not an algorithm, but a method by which you get the nearest addressable ones. Why will I say that this is not an algorithm? It works fine. Okay, in this case, it will give you the correct addressable lines, you can uh, guarantee that, there is absolutely no problem. But there are two issues here, in fact, almost, in fact, one issue. The problem comes because, that means I say the method, why this is undesired or not wanted for? I do not want to use for, uh, operators like multiplication and divisions which are expensive. And also the round function is all, at each step I have to multiply m by x and then add up to b, add is fine and this it is an all in floating point space, floating point uh, based operations multiplication division uh, addition subtraction are more costly than integer operations. This we know from basics of computer science of uh, arithmetic, the floating point arithmetic is much more costlier many many times than the integer arithmetic because the, uh, the, the hardware is suited. Uh, there are very fast uh, algorithms and hardware available to do integer computations in terms of addition, subtraction and multiplication and the floating point it takes about uh, more than double the time, uh, could be even four times the amount you need to do an addition or multiplication using integer arithmetic. So, all these floating point operations, multiplication, addition and division are expensive operations and most over that and each at each step you need to have a round function. At each step you need to have a round function plus an integer arithmetic, so that is going to be the where you lose time. You cannot generate the points very fast to draw the line and you know that when you cannot generate points very fast, you cannot fill up the raster space with addressable points and the line drawing process will be very slow. The, you need a very fast algorithm where given the starting point and the finishing point of a line. Okay, or the starting point could be here, the finishing point could be there, whatever the case may be, you need to actually get those addressable integer locations very fast, so the line is drawn almost instantaneously, not like a pixel, then the second pixel, then the third pixel and so on. And if you have an algorithm by which each of this computation produces significant amount of delay in generating all these integer pixels one after another from the starting to the integer point nobody will purchase your software, nobody will use your computer graphics program. Uh, the, the uh, and uh, it will not be approved by software specialists and uh, and and uh, specialists in the field of computer graphics and uh, they will say we are sorry it's a too uh, slow program it works fine it gives you the exact positions of addressable points those addressable points are the closest to the line drawn that's all fine but it's too slow this is too slow because of these mathematical operations which take time multiplication addition division and the round operation each loop there are n number of loops depending upon number of points which you need to draw and for each loop you have a multiplication operation floating point, a floating point addition and a round function, three floating point operations out of them round is the most costliest one and of course, uh, multiplication as well and they are the ones which is consuming time. Okay? And the other fact which you see now is that if you use this round function, you can get gaps in the line if the slope is more than one. Okay, let us take this example as you see on the screen, okay, you can get gaps in the line if the, if the slope is much, much more, more than 1. Let us take an example, the slope is very high. Let us take an example where m the slope of the line is equal to 10 and the slope b is equal to 2. Now, the equation of the line y equals m x plus b, y equals m x plus b is written as y equals 10 x plus 2. Okay. Substitute x equal to 1, what do you get? It is given already, y is equal to 12. 
substitute the next integer point x equal to 2 what do you get 20 plus 2 22 now you can see you have two address next addressable points differ by a wide margin at x equal to 1 you have y equal to 12 at x equal to 2 you have y equal to 22 this, this you cannot draw a line like this okay you cannot draw a line like this so there are methods by which these sort of problems are to be also handled and addressed while drawing a line so we move towards the first algorithm which uh, uh, which is incremental in nature it it uh, tries to reduce the computational burden and tries to increase the speed of computing the integer addressable pixel locations and the first of the most primitive algorithm you will find them in some old books most than uh, the current books is called the digital differential analyzer or digital difference analyzer algorithm or it is popularly called the DDA for computing the integer locations of a line it is based on incremental. Uh, arithmetic incremental algorithm and uh, what is basically done is the same equation of the line y equals mx plus b is used fine and the m uh, is obtained by the ratio of the y coordinates of the starting and finishing point and also the x coordinate starting and finishing point that ratio can be taken and we have substituted that in place of m the starting and finishing point x and y coordinate to give you the m so that is the equation of the line so based on this equation we assume for the time being that the value of x1 is uh, more than x0 that means you start from the left hand side of the screen and moving towards the right the starting point is less uh, than the finishing point uh, that is that that is why x0 is less than x1 or x1 is more than x0 and dx by dy which are nothing but uh, uh, the y1 minus y0 as given in the expression of m as y1 minus y0 assume that to be dy and dx is nothing but x1 minus x2 we assume that dx is more than dy uh, in absolute it basically means what the value of m will be if dx is more than dy and m is dy by dx this value of the slope of the line is less than 1 we, we assume these constraints now you need to draw a line from anywhere to anywhere on this screen that is true but what may happen is uh, it is not always the case that you start from the leftmost point and go to the right and the slope is less than 1 and all that, but there are other cases you may need to draw a line from here to there or from here to there all sorts of positions are bound to happen, but we will tackle all the situations later on. Right now let us assume that from your leftmost point to the right top point is what you are drawing a line, you are selecting the addressable pixels from left to bottom to top right, you need a good algorithm to get these integer locations number 1 and the slope is less than 1, it is not it's from 0 to 1. Okay. So, these are the two conditions, we will worry about the rest um, um, in, in a couple of slides as we go ahead. So, come back to the slide, so we assume that x1 is more than x0 dx is greater than dy that means slope is less than 1 and we will see that we can easily modify the other situations uh, to handle all the other possible cases of drawing the line. What is the DDA algorithm? Okay, as I said before the dx is defined, so the first four statements of this algorithm here on the right bottom of the screen gives the initialization condition that is not the loop. dx is what I, I just said some time back x1 minus x0, dy is uh, y1 minus y0, the slope of the line m is given as dy by dx. Now, since x1, x0, y1, y0 are integer uh, coordinates, dx and dy will be also integers. But the ratio of two integers is not guaranteed to be an integer quantity. In general, it will be a floating point. So, just remember here that the value of m or the slope of a line is going to be a floating point number y is equal to y0 that is the starting point we know it starts at x0 y0 uh, and so what we do basically is the uh, you actually first draw the first point x0 y0 and then start from you keep uh, make an iterative loop uh, where you actually I have written this in pseudo code uh, not follow any syntax of uh, languages like C it could be Pascal like or algo like so you make a loop from x0 to x1. Okay. So, you start from the x coordinates of the first point or starting point and wind up and finish at the uh, um, finishing end point of the x coordinates and at each point you draw the line. The first point of course will be uh, y is equal to y0. So, you draw the first point which is x0 and round off y0 which is nothing but the y0 itself. Then what you do is this is incremental algorithm that is why it is called you increment y by the value m. You increment y by the value m. Remember y is an integer but 
adding a floating point number will actually return a floating point value on the y. So, what in the next loop what will happen is in the draw point uh, command you need to you have a you the round function will return an integer point an integer value of y and that is what the draw point command basically illuminates. Let us assume that this draw point is a very low level library function where given two integer points x comma y it draws a point on the screen one addressable point given by integer coordinates x comma y both are assumed to be integers. In the next calculation in each loop y becomes a floating point all right, but the round y will return a integer. So, that is what the end for loop. So, you see in the for loop now you have a floating point addition and a round function. Okay, we have actually abolished the, uh, the incremental algorithm has abolished the uh, multiply, floating point multiplication that is the small advantage. So, it will become little bit faster, but not that much because there are still two costly functions within your for loop. The for loop has n number of steps, n number of steps depending upon the number of points you have to draw on the screen x naught to x 1 that is the integer difference and uh, the two costly functions one is the round operation another is the floating point addition. If we can eliminate these two of course, you cannot eliminate both then you cannot draw a line. How to eliminate if you can eliminate the round function which is the cost list and still exist in the DDA or incremental algorithm and replace the floating point arithmetic of addition by an integer arithmetic which will be several times faster and then eliminate some of the round operation. You can almost imagine that for a line to be drawn with several hundred points on the screen the speed up will be tremendous many many times more than you would like to spend then you would like to have for a, uh, a DDA type of an algorithm which has floating point addition and the round function. So, DDA is an incremental algorithm it has speeded up the algorithm a little bit, but it is not the most efficient one. The most efficient one which is going to discuss now in the next few minutes left in this class and then we will carry over it over also to the next class because it is a very important concept which you must know is the method of the midpoint. Uh, 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 criteria of drawing a line and it is based on the idea of uh, or the concept developed by Bresenhams. It is also called the Bresenhams line algorithm um, which is integer based fully on integer calculations integer based arithmetic is what you use and it is based on a criteria of midpoint criteria for drawing a line. So, that is the net. So, the problems which we had with the DDA we will just rewind that again that it uses a floating point and a round inside the loop. So, DDA in spite of being incremental has this problem it is still slower because of these two drawbacks. The drawbacks are the floating point and the round function inside the loop and we have to get rid of this. Of course, you can have to get up rid of the round function the addition floating point can be made integer you have to add anyway you cannot escape that, but once you make the floating point operation integer and throw off the round operation the speed up will be huge in nature. The other part is uh, which we talked in the DD algorithm is the octants covering the 2D space. We assume that you are drawing a line from the left hand side of the screen to the right hand side the slope is less than 1. So, if you see all possible lines in the 2D space and there are 8 octants uh, each uh, with the angle subtending of pi by 4 that means you are dividing the 2D space into 8 different octants we are basically solving the algorithm for the first octant only that means the slope is less than 1 from 0 to 1 and if the line lies in any of the other octants that means the slope is more than 1 or the starting point is to the right and the finishing point is to the left that means the, uh, the line could be in the 8th or 7th octant or even 3rd or 4th then we will see what to do because those are simple uh, manipulations of certain numbers which you have to manipulate and uh, get the environment done solve it in the first octant space and then uh, draw the line back. So, we are assuming that the line to be drawn for the time being is drawn in the first octant only okay? that is one and we will see how the other octants are also handled. Okay. So, uh, uh, so we move on to the uh, last few minutes of this lecture on what is called the Bresenhams algorithm or I will use the technical term of midpoint line algorithm. It is also an incremental algorithm like the DDA algorithm, but it is based on integer arithmetic and we assume that we are working only in the first octant. That means, we are drawing a line from the left hand side left to bottom to top right and in the slope is less than 1. Okay. So, that is the first octant we had seen the picture of 8 octants covering the entire 2D space. So, only the first octant is what we are looking through and uh, once you are able to solve that all the other 7 octants also will be handled. So, if we look back into the slide and uh, given the constraint that we are drawing a line only in the first octant 
uh, given the current choice of a pixel which could be the starting point or any other point integer point at any given point of iteration we will see that the choice of the next pixel based on the assumption the constant of first constant is only between two pixels which we will be labeling as the east pixel or the north northeast pixel so the line states that given the choice of a current pixel which one do we choose next east or northeast we'll see what do you mean by these east and northeast pixels as we go and look into the figure well let us look into the couple of equations today at least to visualize this configuration of east and northeast and understand the midpoint criteria at least today the equation of a line as given in this form parametric form is y equals dy by dx multiplied by x plus b where dy by dx is nothing but the slope of the line dy by dx you know is given by y1 minus y0 x1 y minus i think you have noted down those equations by now otherwise please note down dy is y1 minus y0 the difference in y coordinates of the starting and finishing points and dx is x1 minus x0 the difference in x coordinate of the starting and finishing point of the line and so this is the equation of the line we know that okay now we rewrite the equation of this line y equals dy by dx multiplied by x plus plus b as as a function of f x y equal to 0 it is possible to manipulate and put all the terms on one side and write the equation in the form as a x plus b y plus c equal to 0 this is also an equation of a line you can actually find out that the slope of this line is going to be minus a by b okay so you can visualize this this is another you can easily manipulate this and this is given in the bottom if you rewrite uh, the equation number 1 and try to put that in the form of equation number 2 you will rewrite as f x y as d y multiplied by x minus d x multiplied by y plus b d x equal to 0. Do you please verify that yourself right now that you can rewrite equation number 1 and you are trying to write it as e in the form of equation number 2 and in the process of doing so you get this f x y equals d y x minus d x y plus b dx equal to 0 and this equation is in the form of equation number 2 now as f x y equal to 0 where the parameters of the line now instead of being m and b only are a uh, now capital B of course you must be careful between small b and capital B in this case uh, which are different with two different forms a is you can just simply substitute this equation number 2 and the one given at the bottom a is your dy which is given here b is minus dx this is also given here remember this is b is minus dx and small c will be capital B multiplied by dx. So, these are the three parameters of the line these are the three parameters of the line which uh, is now we will use to and what is the advantage of using this equation. Well you can use this equation to find out what is the mid where is the midpoint of uh, the next choice of the line with respect to the equation of the line. So, you can see that this is where I describe what I mean by east or northeast pixel the two possible choices the two possible choices are left to me let us assume from this figure if you look that the black pixel on the bottom left of the screen the black pixel is the current pixel or it could be the starting pixel also of course if it is the starting pixel the line will start from here. So, I have taken a general case where the line you have used this midpoint criteria to iterate and got a few points already and at a given, given point of time at any given stage of iteration this is the current point which you have already selected. The next choice will be between these two pixels northeast level as red and east level as blue. Why? This has to be because of the constraint that you are working on the first, first octant and the slope of the line is less than 1. If the slope of the line is more than 1 it would have been a different case, but since we do not consider the situation right now the choice is between east and northeast only. M is a midpoint between east and northeast a bisector if you draw a line from east and east to northeast a vertical line the midpoint is the bisector of the line. So, what you try to do basically with this equation of f x y equal to 0 is you evaluate the midpoint m with respect to the equation of the line. So, that is the criteria which is suggested by Bresenham's midpoint line algorithm here and uh, the m is between north east and north east and you need to find out whether this m is above the line or below the line because that gives you a justification as you see in this figure now if m is below the line the line is closer to northeast you will be choosing the northeast if this line was below m which we will see in another figure uh, similarly then of course you will choose east. So, the choice is now clear 
which we just talked some time back that you have to choose between two pixels northeast or east. This is the, if this is the current pixel at any given point of time, the next choice is between northeast and east and you evaluate the midpoint with respect to the equation of the line and find out where is this midpoint located and based on this criteria choose east or northeast. So, how do you use the equation to find out whether the midpoint is below or on the top of the line? What is the equation of the line? This was the equation of the line as given in this form because we started with y equals mx plus b and then rewrote it in the form f x y equal to 0 as in a x plus b y plus c, c is b times d x, b is minus d x and a is d y. So, this, this form we got in the previous slide, you have written this equation already. Now, what does this meaning of this f x y equal to 0 means? If you take a point which lie exactly on this line, if you take a point which lies exactly on the line that means, I select an integer coordinate or any fractional number in fact x comma y and substitute in this expression those coordinates of a point which lie on the line or exactly on the line anywhere, anywhere, anywhere on the line, but on the line is important. Then if you substitute assuming you know the other parameters of the line like dy, dx, capital B and so on, the value of f x y will be equal to 0. That means, the, the point satisfy the criteria that it is on the line and, and uh, the value of the function is exactly equal to 0 on the line. Whereas, if you substitute the values for a point which is on top of the line you or on the bottom, you will get the value of the function not equal to 0. On the line function is equal to 0, on the top or on the bottom not equal to 0, but is not equal to 0 gives you two different conditions. You can almost visualize from the equation of the line that the value of the f, value of the function f if the point is above the line, assuming this to be a line, if the point is above the line in 2D space, then you will get a positive or negative value and completely the reverse will happen if the point is below the line. What? Let us look at this figure and try to see this is the basic concept here that if you substitute a point which is below the line in this case take the value of coordinates of m, m is below the line. If you substitute the x y coordinates of this point m and substitute in the equation of f what basically will happen is uh, this term minus dx multiplied by y will start dropping from the case when the point if the point m would have been exactly on the line. If the point m is below the line this uh, negative quantity will start reducing and force the value of f to grow positive. So, the value of f will be positive you just have to remember that the value of f becomes positive if the point is below the line and if the point is above the line assume a scenario of m goes above the line or take the value of, of the x y coordinates from uh, the, the north east substitute on the value of m what will happen is this dx multiplied by y term will grow more forcing the value of f to be negative. So, this is the main criteria that the value of f becomes positive for a point below the line and a point for a point above the line the value will be negative. Negative on top of the line positive on, on the below the line this is a this you can visualize that the function is equal to 0 exactly on the line it is negative and positive the entire two dimensions placed on the screen is split into two halves where exactly on the line you have all 0 values anything on top you have negative anything on the bottom you have positive positive below the line negative on top of the line exactly 0 in the middle. So, you are dividing the space equally into two different halves positive half and negative half and that is where and that is the concept which is used to evaluate the midpoint. Now, you can visualize that if m is below the line you will get the f function to be positive if m is on top of the line you have the value to be negative above the line and so just looking into the sign of f itself will tell you whether m is on top or below the line and that is sufficient for you to tell whether you choose east or northeast. So, that is the criteria which we say and we stop here saying that this is the midpoint criteria we will start from here in the next hour and move towards forming the algorithm, but uh, the midpoint criteria is the following. I repeat again uh, if you look into the slide the criteria for Bresenham's midpoint and algorithm is evaluate the midpoint m with respect to the equation of the line. So, all points on the line will give you a function value 0 points below the line as this figure shows for the m will give positive values, points on top of the line will give negative values. Look into the sign of f and decide, decide whether the point is below or top of the line. So, in this figure as you see here since m is below the line if you substitute m into the equation f you will get a positive sign and that guarantee the sign of the, the sign of the function f is itself a, a sufficient clue to tell you whether the point is close 
the point is below or above the line or in other words the line is closer to northeast or east. In this case since m is below the line, the line will be closer to northeast. So, you will select the northeast pixel as your next iteration and the case is there where the point is below the line f is positive. The reverse would have happened if m would have gone on top of the line m is above the line f would have been negative and the point would have the line would have passed between m and e or it is closer to the east pixel and in this case you would have uh, considered the east pixel. Okay? So, this is the criteria the, the, the sort of a boolean logic look into the sign of f positive negative positive take one decision of choosing east and northeast and negative you choose the other one uh, sort of a bipolar logic or a boolean logic and that gives you uh, a very good algorithm to select the line that part is done, but of course, we have not seen where the integer arithmetic is coming from. Where the integer arithmetic is coming from, probably the round function will go away. The choice criteria, once it is clear, we will start from here in the next class and see, start exactly from this midpoint criteria and move forward and see how the integer algorithm is brought on with the help of this midpoint criteria. The choice becomes very easy between east and northeast, how the other octants also are taken into account and that completes the entire line drawing algorithm. We will move to the next lecture and see and of course, then we move ahead with curves, equations of curves, circles and ellipses. Thank you very much.